Hi, this is Amy from the Alti Store, and I am here once again with John Weber from Outback Power. Hello. So we're going to go over a little bit uh, of a demo of the Optics RE from Outback. Yeah, so anybody who's curious and wants to know a little bit more about optics can just simply go to opticsre.com and click on the demo um, button here, which is a representation of a system. If you really dig it down into it, there's going to be some little quirky things that you'll notice. Uh, but what we're going to show today is a live system that is up in Bellingham uh, that has three FX inverters on it and uh, some solar, and we'll talk you through some of the features. Excellent. So if one of the first things uh, that a customer or installer is going to see when they just have one system is we're going to drop right down onto this screen right here. There's no reason to show a world map view, but it is worth noting that if I go and look at all the profiles that, so this is my personal system that I'm looking at, but if we look here, we can actually see all the different systems um, that I'm keeping track of and helping my customers out with. And so it's as simple as clicking through here. So as an example, I'll show you the one up at Alpha HPS, which is that example system uh, up in Washington State. And if we click here, that takes us back to the screen that we were just in. And so um, really some of the interesting things about this is at first glance, you can just know that the system's working. So we see the sun here with some dots going out through what is going to be our cell voltage, then out through the inverter and on out to the grid. So just from this representation here and this representation here, of course we know it's selling. We confirm that by looking here. We also note that there's no loads. If there was loads, we'd have a number right here with the little light bulb on. Gotcha. So with the, uh, the total system that's being put out, we have a nice day-to-day -day view here. And if we choose this drop-down menu, we can look at three days ending. And this is what lets us, let's go ahead and just look at the solar here for a second. This tells us exactly how much production is being done uh, each day as we compare it. And as well, then we can go to the week of. So we know that you know production's been up or down, and I bet if we looked at the weather, there would be a direct correlation there. And then finally, look at the month of and the year of. Unfortunately, nice. we haven't been around for, the system hasn't <laughs> been around for a year. Uh, but if you did, you would see multiple bars of, of different years. And this is going to be helpful in particular to installers who are very interested in knowing where their customer's at from year to year and even out to five years. So if you look at five years in a row um, and see production is down from one year to the next, there may be some attention that's needed to the system. Excellent. So let's go ahead and jump back to the day of. So we're looking at today. And if we want to understand uh, exactly how much we've been selling throughout the day, each one of these bars shows us by just resting the mouse. It confirms the time down below, which is 12 a.m. And uh, then we look over on the left and it says we've been selling 1.7 kilowatt hours have gone out to the grid. Now, if we wanted to see what sort of loads we had on the system, we could also add that in as well. So if you actually want to know, am I spinning the meter backwards or am I just consuming on site? That's where these bars are going to tell you very quickly what the system's been up to. Nice. And if for some reason it's the middle of the night and you add the from grid bar as well, suddenly we can see that uh, on certain portions of the day, the grid has been helping out uh, more than uh, what we've produced in solar. And finally, if you're just curious, and a lot of people are going to look at this over the winter time, especially the month of, from Jen. And so in the last month, we haven't had any generator um, input. But if we choose the year of, this will be interesting because you'll be able to take month by month how much has come from the generator. And if you know the generator is a 5kW and um, you burn one and a half gallons of propane an hour, you can quickly figure out what your propane consumption is, roughly, um, and really understand and dial in the system. Do I need more propane for next year? What can I do? Maybe I need to bring more solar into the system. As an installer, if I'm viewing the system for a customer, maybe it makes sense to bring in another charge controller and another uh, set of panels so that when we get through October, November, December, suddenly it makes sense. Uh, to have that solar to reduce consumption and then you can talk about what an ROI would be for that customer. Hey, we bring in two more thousand watts of solar, we're going to give you a return on investment of about two years 
um, basically two winters, and we're going to reduce that overall consumption of generator power. So there's some really interesting ways of um, analyzing this data and being able to get feedback, not only for a DIYer, um, how am I using it, but then if an installer is helping to look and maintain the system, they can do that as well with the customer. Knowledge is power. Yes, it is, absolutely. Something that I always liked is that uh, this is hooked into a National Weather Service, and so uh, you'll be able to look up and see if you have customers spread across a, a large region, uh, then you'll be able to see exactly what their weather is. So if a customer is calling and saying it's not working or it's not performing to my expectations, first thing to do is look up here <laughs> and decide, gosh, is it uh, even sunny enough to be producing the power? Uh, strangely enough, in uh, in spring in Washington State, looks like we've got some nice weather up in Bellingham. Here we can see that all the systems are running okay, that we've got three grid timers all set to master uh, with a single charge controller. We also know that the uh, gateway device, which is the Mate 3, is uh, doing okay as well. So this Mate 3 is actually saying with the I here that it's uh, it could need a new firmware update. So if we choose this device info window and we look at firmware 3.0.25, we go to the Outback website, we can look and just confirm, oh look, they've just recently released a new firmware for that system. And that's going to apply to more and more systems, especially uh, products like the Radian. And the new FXR series inverters are both going to have firmware updatable mm. uh, brains to them. Very and nice. so if you get a little, if you go from a green check mark to an I, then that means that you do need uh, that update. One other thing to note that a lot of people have asked for uh, over a long time is, gosh, it would be nice to get my generator to start again. So here we can go through and enable and disable uh, the AGS features remotely. Nothing worse than having to drive a couple of hours and what? Unfortunately, press three buttons to get the generator to start. Could I just please have another try at it? And that's exactly what this allows you to do. You can set uh, different parameters. Uh, your cell voltage you can change. All these things can be remotely changed as long as you maintain that internet connection uh, to that device. So if we look under event history here, there are things that are happening. Not all of them are, uh, you know, critical events. In fact, I'm not seeing any critical events that are really standing out. Instead, what we're seeing here is just, um, hey, the Mate 3 connected to the Internet. Now it's not connected to the Internet. Now it is. Now it's not. Um, different things like that. Here we see that somebody did a firmware update. And uh, here we see that somebody actually changed the absorb and amps from 10 to 1. And the really neat thing is, is that if it was not done on site, it was done by somebody else through a login, it's actually going to say who made that change in the login. So here we have Otter at the top here that uh, they changed the exempt or an amp, it absorb and amps <laughs> uh, back uh, from 1 to 10. And you know that he did it remotely. Nice. So if a customer says, I don't understand why it's not working. Well, did you push any buttons, sir? I don't remember <laughs> pressing anything. You can go back here and say, well, somebody on December 17th on site made this change. And uh, and so you can hold people accountable in a new way and really understand if the customer is a button pusher or they're not. So it's a great way to uh, hold people accountable, but as well compare uh, the rest of it. So when we get up into just what it looks like from the top down, here we have terms and conditions. We have tech support, really easy way to find that information. Um, I don't want to delete myself, or I can sign out. Uh, something that's special, uh, and I believe we're going to continue doing this, is down in the bottom corner here, we have a little tiny question mark. And this actually allows us to send a message. So if you see something quirky, you don't understand what it is, um, you can actually give feedback. I'm going to give feedback. This is a test of my ability <laughs> to send emails to tech support. So somebody at tech support is going to actually get this. I'm going to include a screenshot oh, nice. and choose next. And of course, the, if if you're on a screen, they're going to throw up a couple of things that maybe people have commonly asked. And if one of them um, makes sense, then you can actually choose that. But we'll go ahead and skip and send this message. And uh, we'll give my email address. 
and we'll go ahead and send a message. So it's sending the message with a screenshot. They probably won't respond to me, but you'll actually get an email back that says, thank you, we received your email. And by the way, I can feel it vibrating in my pocket on my phone right now. <laughs> um, they will give you feedback and be able, so if you see something quirky, you don't understand it, or you just think they're just plain old something wrong, uh, you can send that uh, to them. That's nice. Yeah, so that's really a high-level overview of the system. I definitely recommend people uh, jumping out to the demo app here, and I'll just click on it, and uh, we can jump in and allow somebody to look at the system. Again, this is a very filled-out system uh, because it's it's just an example. But if we even jump out to five years, this is what uh, our solar to grid to load looks like year after year after year. So big numbers. So see here we have kilowatt hours <laughs> uh, in the 90 kW. So it's just an example, but I encourage anybody to uh, just bop through the free demo and check some things out. Uh, looking at state of charge versus voltage uh, versus battery temperatures. Of course, I have it on the five year. Let's go ahead and switch this back to three days. And so you can really see how things dynamically change. Again, this is a system. These are almost randomly generated numbers. Um, but we can see here, as I was speaking earlier, from the solar array through the charge controller, it's going into the batteries, then out to the grid, and into the loads at the same time. Very nice. Yeah. And if this system, quote unquote, has been running for a long time, because here's what we've already saved in gas, power, and CO2. So just a real brief overview uh, of the system, what it looks like, the fact that an installer, an end user can monitor it. Uh, if you notice, we're doing all this through a web page. And because we did it through a web page, that means that your phone, tablet, or PC, you can interact with the system. And we've scaled what you can see for those three devices. So if we know it's a small screen, we're going to make things more vertical than trying to have to move around a big giant screen like this. So, so I don't have to worry about downloading an app for my phone. I just use the browser. Exactly. Nice. So there's no need uh, for that. Anything that's HTML5 or better uh, is already compatible with optics. Excellent. Well, thank you so much, John. Well, I appreciate the opportunity to be here again, and uh, I look forward to showing you guys some of the more of the neat things that we have coming out uh, this year. Very cool. Thank you.